ASH26. Working on this rudder linkage system, which didn't expect it to be so difficult. But we've ran into a bit of a problem with some of the geometry on the uh, angles coming out of the fuse. And I didn't expect it to be a problem at all. So, just trying to work through some of the details right now. It's quite frustrating because I thought we had it figured out before, but I'm having to rethink the whole scenario. The larger push rods just, they aren't going to give enough flexibility when this thing exits the frame from here, okay? Um, as a result, I'm stuck basically doing what I didn't think I was gonna be doing, which, honestly, I like this solution. I just, I just don't think it's enough. I don't think it's strong enough um, for a full-blown model this size. But I guess maybe, maybe we're gonna find out that the other style was too strong. I don't know. Right now I'm just trying to figure out. Okay, so as you can see, we got a little bit of play, but then we bind if we had this supported there. So we gotta leave it not supported. So let's say we support it somewhere inside there. Well then we're allowed to move and it's pretty free. So just for grins and giggles, if I were to um cap that off. There's a little plastic thing that goes on top of there. I'm just trying to think for now if there's something I can do temporarily. Okay, so this is the system I'm using right here. I, um, I bought a different number of systems that might, might work for this. And these have these little clips that go on the ends and then on the servo respectively and I think for now we have no other choice but to try it and see if we can get lucky and it's it is very very light I'm just concerned that we're not going to get enough torque transferred um, to actually move this plane I'll just bring these in there. So basically we've got a little adapter that goes on the end and snaps onto itself. On the other side we've got a couple of pieces that go on there. A little set screw bites the wire and then this goes on the bottom to keep it on the actual uh, servo control arm. And you know, to be perfectly honest with you, and completely ironically enough, we have virtually the exact length we would need. I mean, almost exactly exact, and almost exactly in the exact position. Sorry guys about the interruption, I had a battery going low on me. So basically I've got these, this system here, is used to, along with these little pieces, I can adapt that little control rod from there to here, which is pretty cool. And <clears throat> ironically enough, it looks like it's just going to be the perfect length, which is totally weird. I guess I shouldn't really say it's totally weird. Somebody probably thought of this, just not me, because I've never done it before. So what I have to do is I basically have to take apart, oh good lord, who uses slotted screws? What a joke. <sighs> Leave it up to the bro to use a slotted screw. How are you supposed to start that thing? That just irritates me to death. Now if this works, 
all will be forgiven. But like, why not a hex or anything other than slotted, right? Alright, well, it's um, probably going to be we're going to be pretty close to what we need. Let's take this thing off. It is funny too because I thought for sure there's no way these things are going to work. There will be some complication that comes up. That's what I thought about these. Which is hilarious. So we'll slip that in there. Yep, and it fits good. Grab this little black key. And since this isn't an elevator, or like a pair of ailerons, I actually could like live with this as a permanent suitable fixture here. Once I get it together, of course. But it's just pressure fit. I do not like that. Not for a second. Although I can definitely say it's hard to do, which means it's gonna be very difficult to undo and redo. Just putting it on there, I guess. So it's in position. It's got nice freedom to slip and slide, which is gonna be necessary given the conditions of the environment. Okay, so that thing's always going to be more or less pointed vertical, which is what we need. So we'll slip this through. We may have to back off the screw to make room for it to slide back in now that it's slipped out. Okay, so I'm just pretty much putting this right at the end here. I'm going to kind of womp on it here a little bit. That's a lot of pressure. I hope it doesn't come off super easy. Because I can turn a screw pretty hard. So now let's just pop this out here real quick. You know, normally I wouldn't think of this part of the project as being a hard part. Like I mentioned a couple other times during this project, it seems like a lot of steps in this project have been challenging. It's not like anybody came out and said, oh, this is for a beginner. Nothing of the sort. In fact, I had some people, you know, warn me that it was going to be challenging. And that's fine. I invite a challenge. It's just sometimes these challenges are pretty frustrating. Now, you can see the hole is going to allow for... Um, a lot of slop. That I'm not okay with if this is our permanent solution. So here's the thing, I don't know if this is going to be the permanent solution to be perfectly honest. So not sure what to do yet. I think I'm probably going to just poke a little hole real quick and the way I'm going to do it He's using this tool and some heat. Make sure I'm not going to catch anything on fire above me. Check for heat. That's acceptable. That's going to be awkward as heck. Check them for heat above me. We're doing good. Oh, having a heck of a time doing this today. Usually this is pretty easy. I might try it a little different today. I 
I might actually drill it. This bit's way too big. So we gotta go to the micro bits. Get one of these sets out. Okay, so we'll grab the biggest one here and we'll see if that's big enough. And when we're all said and done, we'll trim off the excess from this. That's actually pretty close. This is not going to bite. I figured that would happen. So now we got to use the chuck on this one because it's smaller. Also, so happens to be a far inferior drill. migrated to the other hole. I gotta pause it and come right back guys. Alright guys, sorry about that. I couldn't fit my helmet in and around the structure because it's too big. So basically we've got that taken care of. So now um we're going to have to do some quick testing. So, that should be pretty exciting. Grab the radio system. Turn it on. We don't necessarily need the ESC, but we need the ESC to make it easy. Which is what we want for this part of the test. This is going to be a quick and dirty test. We don't even need the ESC in the plane. So this is the rudder. Doesn't really matter which channel we plugged it into, but I just want to know what it is. And it doesn't matter what battery you use, as long as it's commensurate voltage. I'm going to go for a 3S at least. That's a 3S. Okay. I don't care if this cell is good. I just need enough to turn it on. The motor is not going to run. Okay. Oh, that is so cool. Even though it's not right yet, it's still cool. It's really neat to see something come together. And this is a very light solution. It's just probably not the correct solution. It's, um, it's a solution, and I might be using this solution so I don't want to poo-poo it too much. I'm going to actually, ironically enough, I'm going to just try using a zip tie temporarily. Um, and if temporarily becomes permanent, I really don't care. But at this point, I don't suspect it to be permanent. So, trying to get through a weird hole like that. Take and bend yourself a couple of 180 degree flat bends. And then you can feed it through your structure. In this case, I need to go under and then back over. Grab the forceps. Use the forceps to help bring the zip tie in. And you can use this to feed it through. And just tighten that up. So all we're trying to do is just keep this positioned here. We're not really trying to you know, like hold it there like it's some special spot. We're just trying to keep it from slipping, okay? But I mean, guys, look at that. That is a surprisingly good amount of throw.
it's not returning to the home position because the servo is lifting out of the pocket here. And so in order to validate where that's going to end up, I would need to screw it in. I'm not opposed to screwing it in, but at this point it would be kind of nice to not have to screw it in. And then put these screws in there that are going to be needing to be taken out potentially later. Now these have a rubber that would go around here. And they also have these inserts like this. Excuse me, that's not it. Like this. Including these Emacs servos, which is like a guide for the screw to hold it very specific position. Just like so, okay? And that's all hunky-dory. And I'm okay with using all that. So I say, we're going to eventually have to screw it in, so why don't I get the appropriate drill and I'll come right back. 1 16th of an inch appears to be the correct drill bit size. I'm just going to hold this where I think I want it to be, because it is possible to have a little bit of play here. See, the problem is, I'm going to hit that hole. That hole might be okay on one of the two sides. You see what I'm talking about, guys? There's a little bit of a relief. So I gotta... I'm just curious about something. I want to try something. I wonder if I can just slip this in there. Just as a temporary means of holding. Um, and that, my dear friends, worked perfectly to hold it. Now there's no movement. Look how clean that is. Okay, so that warrants um, probably going ahead and putting this clip on if it'll go. Keeping in mind that this fixture will need to be a certain amount out. So I'm going to have to take and, I don't know if you guys can tell, but you see how I've got these holes where the factory holes were? I had to add my own hole in there. As a result, I'm not going to be able to use this structure because it's going to get in the way. So I can either modify this structure by cutting off a little bit of it, which I don't want to do, or I can cut off some of this, which I can replace easily. So I'm going to go ahead and lift out my control mechanism. But before I pull it all the way out, I'm going to mark that hole so it's very easy to see. Because there was a second one I made that didn't work. And um, we'll just use this blue marker here. Okay, so we got that marked with blue. Um, probably you for this. Side cutters. Not 100% sure this is going to work the way I expect it to, but I hope it does. That would be pretty awesome if it did. I can't believe how good this little push rod system works for as small as it is. Ouch. Okay, so you can see the blue mark I mean now. Real good. I'm going to leave myself a little room for improvement. Ow. Okay, so I'm going to clip this, but i got to leave a little material. i got to leave a little bit of material for strength. That shot across the room really good. Okay, I'm going to get this tool. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay guys, you're probably thinking the same thing I'm thinking, which is I need an X-Acto knife so I can trim off that little roll over edge. I gotta apologize, my autofocus is working really poorly tonight. I think it's the white on white, all this white material kind of blends together. Camera has trouble focusing on it. Okay, so that little blue thing is where our wire is gonna go through. We may need to poke another one a little further back now that we had to cut all that stuff off. But I knew that was a possibility when I did this the first time. Granted, that's pretty thick material. I don't think it's gonna be a problem. I would rather have a newer, better hole that's more centrally located, but I don't know that that's necessarily going to happen. Let's try it. Gosh, I hate changing stuff like this, but this is the part I couldn't film because I couldn't fit my helmet in here, guys. I'm going to try to film it this time. Good way to get a drill bit through the finger. But to be honest, I don't know that there's a better way. Because as you can see, immediately upon letting go, the drill bit popped out. Well, that's convenient timing. Now that it's completely taken care of, it decides to break off. It's kind of funny. I mean, it's okay. I knew that would eventually happen. I just didn't expect it to happen at that exact juncture, which is pretty funny. It does make it easy to finish this, because now I can do it out here. Okay. Horrible focus tonight, guys. I really apologize. I'm trying to keep you involved in this. You can see what the heck I'm doing. But I guess it's just the way the cookie crumbles on this small crap. See if we can get our mechanism to work before we get everything repositioned on there onto the rudder. I just envision that thing going through and jabbing my finger, and for like three weeks having a giant hole in my finger because it's happened numerous times. Not like you do it on purpose, but it just happens. Okay. Kind of like deburring the hole with that drill bit there, guys. There. Get in there, for goodness sakes. There it goes. And you would think that it's a perfect fit. I mean, it is absolutely a perfect fit. Just don't understand that. It's super annoying. Okay, so now we... We can try this uh, adapter clip, and the way these clips work is real simple. I'm going to make sure this thing focuses first. Okay, so you slip this thing through the excess wire, like so, and then you bring it down, and then it clips, it clips upon itself. Well, 
That is if this is thin enough, which this is a little bit too thick still yet. So I have to take down the material. What a ridiculous amount of modifications to one little stupid adapter. So what kills me is this little crap adds up. It's expensive and then you gotta sit here and reinvent the wheel every time you use them. That's why I kind of stopped using, well, never really started using the bro. Hinges and stuff like this. But, you know, look, that's what's gonna end up getting me from the front to the back. And then all this glue and stuff that's on here now. Really by rights, that should be broken off at least. Not really adding anything to the equation, except for weight. And depth. I don't think we need the depth or the weight. Okay, I have that CA off. I wonder if you guys have any running bets on how long it's going to take for me to chop myself open on a video doing all this nasty cutting like that. It would be probably a pretty good bet to take because it'll it'll eventually happen. Okay. And here we are at the end of the second video doing the almost the exact same thing. I'm sure it's just as frustrating to watch as it is to do, except slightly less because you don't have to actually do it. You just get to sit back and laugh and point. Just kidding. Okay. So it looks like the thickness is is close to where we might be able to snap it. Let's try. Yeah, it snapped on. Okay. So now we'll see. It looks like now I've just got too much thickness here. That part I can take care of with it already hooked. <laughs> 